in this video I will be painting pomegranates. It looks like a very detailed and difficult painting but actually I was working on it for about 50 minutes and I will explain to you the whole process and give you some tips so you will understand how to approach detailed subject like that with ease and confidence. Before I started painting, I transferred the photo on the watercolor paper with the help of charcoal rub and then I made a pretty detailed pencil drawing to help me get started. I will start painting with number 10 sable brush and the two pomegranates on the left and on top are pretty easy. All we need to do is start with their local color. So a bit of yellow for the sunlit parts and then Windsor red for the local color. I also have some Antroquinoid red by Daniel Smith for the cooler portions. It's always good to have a variety of colors. So to give you the heads up, I will only be using four paints for this. Two reds, one yellow and there will be phthalo green later. And let's do the second one the same way. Warmer red for the areas that are closer to us and cooler red, Antroquinoid red for areas that recede into the shadow. Lift in some color in the areas where the light hits pomegranates. They're not super shiny, they're pretty matte, but there will be some considerably lighter areas on the sides that you can see in the reference photo. And it's important not to let the water to seep into the darker areas too much because then you will get blossoms. And if that happens, I always add a little more pigment and then that prevents blossoms from forming. And of course we need to soften the edges inside the pomegranate and they will have a sharp edge on the outside. Okay, now we can start working on this cut up pomegranate, the broken up one where we see the seeds and the key to painting all the seeds. It looks like there are just so many of them and it's too overwhelming, but we need to work from big forms to smaller ones. As you see, there is like a portion inside that pomegranate that's all red. It's all different shades of red, but in general it's all red. So I'm going to apply antroquinoid red to this whole area. Just give it a nice even wash. And of course also that little portion of the skin that we see on the pomegranate, there's a lot more yellow in it, so I'm going to mix some red and yellow for the for the skin of the pomegranate. Okay, and those um, white areas, these are like little membranes inside the pomegranate. They're white, but they also have a little yellow tint in some places. And I'm going to give a very light yellow wash to some areas. So far, my pomegranates are floating in the air. I think I need to paint the shadows around them and work on the background a little bit. And to get a nice gray tone to paint the table that the pomegranates are sitting on, I'm going to mix the colors that I already used, which is antroquinoid red, with its complement color. And complement of red is green, so I'm going to use phthalo green. And mix together, they give me a nice neutral gray. I have a couple more videos about mixing grays from complementary colors if you're interested in that subject, and I will leave you the link in the card and in the description. I'm using a flat brush, it will be easier to control, easier to cover larger areas with it, but I have to be careful not to paint over my pomegranates. So I have to preserve those sharp edges around the, the pomegranates. I'm giving the background just a light wash so far, just to get me started. I will be deepening those colors as I go along. Let's do it in this corner as well, working around my main subjects. Okay, this is my first wash, everything is dry, and now I can start deepening shadows on my pomegranates. 
As you know, on rounded objects, the shadow will never be the darkest at the outside edge because the edge turns, so the edges will be slightly lighter. I'm going to gradually build the tone and the darkest areas will be slightly away from the edge. Just if you carefully look at the reference photo, you will be able to see that. I'm using the same colors, Windsor Red and Androquinoid Red. But in the deep shadow areas, I am mixing them with a bit of, of tallow green. It's always good to use the same few colors throughout your painting. So when I use a lot of red and just a little bit of tallow green, I get very nice purple color that matches the core shadows on the pomegranates. Okay, now we can work on our broken up pomegranate. Those little membranes, you will see they're casting the shadow as well. I am still looking for large forms. I am not painting every single seed in that pomegranate just yet. I'm working on larger forms. That's why I painted those two little cast shadows on it and I'm going to let it dry while I work on the small details on the other two pomegranates. shadows on them need to be deepened. Those cast shadows inside, I'm still using the same mixture of antroquinoid red with uh, tallow green and I'm painting around my pomegranates. So I'm painting the cast shadows with a smaller brush because I want the edges to be very precise. And you can see that pomegranates are starting to become more three-dimensional. They kind of separate from the paper almost. And that's the optical illusion that we create by deepening certain areas on our painting. All right, it's time to add details to the pomegranate on the right. I have a small brush. And now what I'm going to do is just paint a bunch of circles with Windsor Red and also with Antroquinoid Red a little later. The video is sped up, of course, but you still can see that it goes pretty fast because I did not start painting every seed separately without laying some preparatory washes. Now that I have my light areas already where they need to be and beginnings of the shadows, I can just add a few of those details very quickly and you will see that this pomegranate becomes more and more detailed and realistic. drawing circles with different shades of red to show the seeds. And sometimes they're not even circles, they're kind of like little dots that I see. So I'm painting the core shadow side of each seed. And there are some up there as well. The level of detail will depend on your level of patience. If you want to be more precise and spend a little more time on painting those little core shadows, your painting will turn out even more photorealistic. But the principle needs to be the same. You need to go from overall form with some overall preparatory washes to painting the details because that's how you keep your tonal relationships in your painting true to life. The 
there are a few like seeds that we can see behind that membrane so let's throw like a very light wash there and the membrane we painted that cast shadow first but i think it needs to be deepened at this stage few quick brush strokes and basically our pomegranate is done. I'm going to add some details in the tails. Not sure what the scientific term is for this. And let's deepen the shadows under the pomegranates a little more. After watercolor dried it lightened quite a bit. I still have some of the mixture of or some of that neutral gray that I got by mixing anthraquinoid red with phthalo green and my red is almost gone. I'll have to add some more after I finish this painting. <laughs> deepen some of those shadows to give our painting even more definition. Those little separate seeds, they will all cast little shadows. So I'm going to paint that. It only takes a second to do. pomegranates themselves lightened as well so I can darken the areas closest to us to make them even more three-dimensional more round a little more texture on this one it's still important to leave a few white areas on it because those internal membranes they're very bright in the middle there so I'm careful not to paint over it And this fellow on the left has a little leaf on top, so I'm going to paint that. And maybe add a few green strokes in other places just to balance my painting. You don't want to have certain color in just one spot unless it's your focal point. And we're pretty much done. I'm going to take a little bit of white gouache because there are tiny little highlights on those pomegranates and I really don't want to do too much because they're not really shiny. So I'm wiping the excess gouache with my finger, very professional technique I'm sure, uh, but that's the easiest thing to do. I'm going to correct a few edges on the pomegranate on the right. I lost some whites but I was actually pretty careful about preserving it. Just a few small corrections. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in comments if you like pomegranates. I love them, especially when they're ripe and sweet. This one looked very juicy and appetizing. It made me hungry. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you will not be afraid to paint detailed, complicated subjects like that. You will give it a try because now you know the steps that you need to take going from overall to detail. Thank you so much for watching this video on Tamarab Studios channel and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.